Two hours in the 206 over the jungles of Bolivia. We landed in a little Indian village. When you see the quantity of fish, in some place more fish than water. You find a species like the Dorado. Look at this thing. What a magnificent animal. A Dorado on fly. There he is. It's probably one of the most spectacular game fish on fly that you can catch. I love to tie. As, as, as fishermen as, uh, and as guy, always trying to push the limits or, or I don't know if we can say create something new. The Dorado flies tend to be large. You know, it's not like casting to a bonefish. You know, they want a lot of, I'm not gonna say mass, but a lot of profile to the fly. That's a money fly right there. Exactly, it's, it's a long fly, large fly, with a very nice profile and a very nice behavior. And thinking in that, I did that articulated one. Works really, really good. So this, I can fish this one? Of course. Thank you. Of course, pleasure. I have been in some, some magnificent jungles before in Guyana, in Brazil, but something grabbed hold of me about this jungle in Bolivia. That's a little bitty one. Is that a, that's not a Dorado though, is it? Yeah, it was a Dorado. It's just massive. And the trees and the foliage, and it all blends together in this incredible photograph or painting that I'll never forget. There he is. You mean right there? What a gorgeous jump. I love how well you know this river. You know, there's so many places fish can be. It's incredible. You know, what I can't believe is that besides trout and salmon, this is the only other fish that has an adipose fin. Oh yeah? Did you, you didn't know that? No, no. Here's the adipose fin right here. Trout and salmon have it, salmonoids have it. But here you find, you know, the Dorado's got it. Look at the, look at the coloration around its gill plate. I mean, I guess the, the Indians look at this fish as I mean, it's special for them. Yeah. I can see why. I mean, just look at it, yeah. you know? And also, I told you that they think that this is the police of the river. The police of the river. Yeah. I can These see fish why. Keep, keep the sabalo in the Intact. shore so they can hunt them with bow and arrow. Well done. Amazing. Good job. Thank you. Good job, good job. You know, I'm showing up at the lodge with almost perfect water conditions. Fish traveling up and down the river and, and moving around. So we're hoping for just a little bit of rain, but not too much rain. There he is. Oh, nice. Wow. Huh? <laughs> there are more than one there. Oh, my thumb cramped. <laughs> I mean, I love fishing structure. Throwing that streamer in there six inches from the log, swinging it through and Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. Watch how you roll. 
Is that just not amazing? Look at the gill plates. All right, let's get that fly out, get him back in the water. Not only is it some of the greatest fishing for Dorado in the world, but it's in one of the most spectacular places I've ever been. I mean, the biodiversity is unbelievable. Fernando told me that not far from here, there are about 250 species of trees in one hectare. The second evening, it started to rain, and in the beginning, it was kind of cooled things off, and we weren't really thinking about it too much, and we were anxious to have a little bit of rain. I woke up the next morning. My first thing to do at 5 o'clock was take a look at the river, and I knew it was going to be a problem. The obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Yozuri, fish the best. And by Shimano. It's amazing, the river came up three feet and is totally blown out. I mean, it's- Another river. It's another river. My heart sank as I looked at the river and saw and the river was red with mud. And I knew that the fishing was gonna be over. But you know, that's gonna shuffle the deck, so to speak, and hopefully these fish get moving. And if we get our last day or two here, and we get fish in all these new pools. As an angler, you need to be ready to adapt to all conditions. And, and here we're faced with, with Mother Nature and the conditions that she's given us. Well, like I said, I'm excited. We get to go down and see a little bit of the village and, and see where these guys live and, and then go do some catfishing yeah. and maybe even make a few casts with lures. Yeah. You know, as we climb up the hill out of the river to the village. Me llamo Carta. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto, Romina. Romina? It's very basic structures. They have no running water. They had a, an oven, a clay oven that they bake some bread in. I think that that's the school for the, for the children. I got to know them and spend time with them. They don't have what we might have, but they have what they need. That's to make bags. Yes. Bags that we sell there in the, in the, in the lodge. And they are incredibly happy. Here's my gift from the chief. Till the next time I come back. Maybe. <laughs> The more simple their life is, and the less complex, the happier one can be. Now, I grew up on the Harpeth River outside of Nashville, Tennessee. My, my days were spent fishing the river, and a lot of it was for catfish. I figured that I was gonna get to go native this week a little bit, and all my good friends know me for hand lines. In Tennessee and in North America, I'm catching channel cat, and blue cat and flathead and but then all of a sudden you show up in in south america and they've got their catfish too i mean we should be able to get a 100 pound catfish on that hold on but let me show you if i got i got some bigger hooks the bait of choice once again for the catfish is going to be a chunk of sabalo i'm as excited about going and catching those today as as i am about dorado fishing yesterday oh well, he's got him Ooh. Uh -huh. What a sick. What kind of catfish is that one? The name is uh, Tujuno. Tujuno. It's moved down there. Move down? Yeah. You know, the catfish, he needs the current a little bit to bring him his food, but he doesn't want to be in the heaviest part of the current. He wants to be out of the current a little. Long way before that hit bottom. Probably drifted 30 feet. You need to cast up there and let it drift to right there. Problem is the volume has come up so much that it's kind of moved everybody around. Please be a Sudo B. 
very little one, but we'll take him. Beautiful. Look at this thing. Boy, he's grunting and everything. Look how beautiful this catfish is, huh? The whiskers, oh, he's missing one of them. You see the top one? He's feeling around on the bottom, looking for our bait. Golly, what a gorgeous fish. Look at this stuff. Not much else to do on a yeah. rainy, muddy day. Not easy. Clever, 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 clever. You got him? Even though I'm here for a short amount of time, you know, my <laughs> interaction with these, our local Indian guides, being a part of their civilization, you know, you want to be there and experience more and more. And Beautiful catfish. This is a surubi. Two surubis, one with the traditional Indian method on hand line and one on conventional. You know what happens in uh, Bolivia during rainy season? It rains. We're gonna make our best of it because we're here. Catching a couple catfish. Cross our fingers, if we get really lucky, this will just be a small shower. We get to get back at it again. second day of high muddy water. Conditions are really, really, really tough for Dorado fishing. But we're gonna go with what we know and go to some of the deeper pools. I can either sit back at the lodge and not fish, or I can adapt and go out with some new gear and make some changes. Oh, Blackie. You like that one? Yeah. Or is that too much weight on it? No, it's perfect. There he is. There he is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a monster. You know, he smoked it too. Huh? He's got me around that rock. Broke me off. Broke me off. He got me around that rock. I saw it happen right then. That's the way it goes, man. Working so hard. There he is. There he is. Oh. Oh. There's another one. Look at that. Where'd you say it was gonna be? <laughs> huh? Next to the log. They love structure, don't they? Piled on that hoagie. I just love these fish. Thank you. Look at the color on this fish. A little bit whiter with this muddy water than they've been. Yeah. We're enjoying ourselves and, and I'm having a great experience. You know, but Ezekiel and Fernando want to deliver more. That's just the type of people they are. And there he is. 
Good one too. Nice one. Oh yes. Zeke, you are the man. They want me to see the river in its best, best character. Now he's going down. Oh! That's, that's been a tough, tough few days. And they come up with this incredible plan of traveling five hours upriver, five more hours upriver, and going camping for the night. The Obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Cuda Fishing Tools, Fierce, Tough, Proven, Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. Traeger Wood Fired Grills, Taste the Wood Fire Difference. And additional support provided by the following brands. So two, two hours up before we even start fishing. Yes. Work our way to camp and spending the night in the jungle. Yes. I love it. Hopefully the water clears up a little. The water Hopefully. actually looks, the, the, water the water's much better. better. You know, the idea of getting above the majority of these tributaries are that the further upstream we go, hopefully we find cleaner and cleaner water. We've been working a little over an hour, getting all our boats and gear upstream, pretty far up the river now. In this flat, you can see we're getting better visibility for sure the further up we go. Oh, fish. Landed on him. Got him. Got him. Wow. <laughs> Was that not hot or what? Huh? It landed on him. He spun around and came back and ate it. Paid off, come all the way up here. We have three, four times the visibility that we have back yes. down river. First cast. And with this kind of water, the fish stay hunting in the shallow water so you can see them. To think I'm catching fish like this all the way up this jungle river. His fin is bitten off. Good we'll start. I'm, I'm really glad we came all the way up here. Good we'll start, man. Unbelievable. As we get closer and closer to our camp, you know, the water's getting cleaner, the fishing's getting better. Ooh, look at, ooh, God, ooh, ooh, ooh. look at that thing. Do you see that? Holy <laughs> sh! I am unbelievable, <laughs> man. That was great. Outstanding. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out the waterfall. Try to come here. No, he's going down. Yeah, okay. If he's going down, try to follow him. I mean, this is the jaguar of the river. Look at this thing. Still jumping. Such a magnificent fish in a magnificent place. What a jump. Those first couple jumps, he took off across the rapids and jumped on the other side. Like I said, magnificent fish in a magnificent place. Who would have ever imagined the jungles of Bolivia? Great, great, good job. You did a okay, great job. You, it's yours. Woo! Unbelievable. You know, what was really fun about this experience was, granted, I'm, I'm sure, you know, our local Indians have spent some time up there, but most of their experiences within, you know, a couple hours from their village. There he is! Yeah! But here we all are together, you know, is this kind of tiny expedition team Nice job, Ezekiel. He's a really strong fish. 
he eats on the, on the dead drift. Let me grab this uh, Ooh, it's cute. jungle permit. It's a really, really big one. Ooh. Look at this. Look at that huge paku, it's beautiful. <laughs> that is an amazing looking fish. Amazing. You see that? It's like human teeth. Okay, put right, the fish in the water. Oh, huh. so much for that. Thank you, man. Thank you. It was a pleasure. After this incredible adventure and this journey, it's really hard to think about it all from the plane flight in here to, you know, meeting a lot of the villagers at the landing strip. <laughs> that was great. Look, look at this next one. Look at this next one coming. There's, there's another there. I know, there's a huge one there. <laughs> Look at this. That's amazing. In this water, are you kidding me? My first step into the canoe and going up river to the home pool and the lodge and our first rainstorm and high water and meeting Felix, the chief. Look at that, look at that, look at that. There's another Dorado trying to eat the fly look out that. of his mouth. There's two more. Grab him. All the great Dorado and catfish that I've caught, and we're here now after our journey five hours up river is hopefully going to be my last and the most incredible, you know, day of fishing that I've experienced. That was the most that I, I don't even know what to say. I'm <laughs> speechless. I'm truly speechless. Giants in the jungle, man. <laughs> I mean, look at the journey, look at the adventure that I've just had all week. That's incredible. What a magnificent animal. He came out of the water over rocks to eat it. This may be the last fish Ooh. of the trip for me. Another just epic, epic fish in the jungle. Between the fish and my new friends and the jungle, no, this was incredible.